And if you want a little bang in your yin yang, come along. Is the July 4th holiday a recipe for disaster given the issues with the system right now? There are going to be challenges, but we're watching it closely and we're talking to the airlines every day. We need to spur the transition to green shipping. But the bottom line is, ultimately, the reason why gas prices are up is because of Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. Freedom is back in style. Welcome to the revolution. Yeah, we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song. Sean Hannity. The new, the new Sean Hannity Show. More behind-the-scenes information on breaking news. And more bold, inspired solutions for America. This is a special edition of the Sean Hannity Show. America trapped behind enemy lines. Day number 327. Oh, I was getting so excited. When I hear Scott Shannon say it's a special edition, I thought I was going to hear, and now, welcome guest host Joe Concha. Ah, well, maybe we'll, we'll try to make it special in our own way. Yes, everybody, this is Joe Concha filling in for Sean Hannity. I am a media and politics columnist for The Hill. That's out of Washington, D.C. I'm one of those Fox News talking head types, right? They call us contributors. If you watch that network, I'm fairly certain maybe you've caught me once or twice. I join Sean on television every Tuesday and Friday night and do about 50 or 60 shows in between. It's a labor of love. I'm also the author. I've never written a book before. I'm more of a sprinter. You know, a column's like a thousand words, 1200 words to do 65 thousand words i didn't think that was in my dna but you know i see what's happening with this country and i see this president and this administration i think we focus a little bit too much on biden and not on the other players on the team like we heard pete Buttigieg just speaking before or kamala harris or the energy secretary in granholm or the dhs secretary in mayorkas i could go down the list but this is remember the island of misfit toys in rudolph the red-nosed reindeer we have the reality version of this happening in Washington, D.C. on Team Biden. So the name of my book is called, Come On, Man. The truth about Joe Biden's terrible, horrible, no good, very bad presidency. And that isn't an exaggeration. I'm not the type of person, if you see me on Fox, that yells and screams just to draw some attention to myself and maybe Mediaite will write it up or some publication that covers cable news so I can get my name in the paper and then some clip goes viral on YouTube. I don't care about that stuff. I honestly do not. I almost like it when I don't hear anything after a segment, except a couple people maybe writing me on Twitter saying, hey, I think you made a point that I never heard before, or hey, that seemed to be from a common sense perspective. That That's all I try to operate from, pragmatism. And I look at this presidency and I honestly try to find something positive or something to be optimistic about, and I can't find it. And you look back at the presidencies of Clinton and Obama, and they didn't pull all that great either, not like Joe Biden in his first term, who is the lowest of any first term president in the history of polling. You gotta go all the way back to Harry Truman, to Trump, and Biden is lower. And you think about what he was handed. This great economy coming out of COVID, we were definitely on the upswing. You think of a hockey stick, right? He's handed multiple vaccines to battle COVID, right? So he's got that at his back that Trump handed him. And everything else going on as far as North Korea is not firing, firing off missiles anymore and doing all these tests. They've been tamed. ISIS decimated. So we're not at war anywhere. We still had people in Afghanistan, but there was a way to keep troops there and keep the peace without doing whatever he did about a year ago next month. So I look at this presidency and I swear it will go down as the worst this country has seen in our lifetimes. And that goes out to everybody who was born after Herbert Hoover and the Great Depression, right? And you're going to see in this book, 
Joe Biden isn't a victim of circumstances, but he and his cabinet, his advisors, his handlers are masters of self-inflicted wounds to this country. And the consequences have been devastating to our wallets, to our 401ks. I can't look at, I got this Merrill Lynch app. That's where I keep my investments and it tracks what my 401k is doing. I looked at it maybe about a month ago and I was horrified. I can't touch it, of course. So I see this happening and, and I'm telling you, between the economic part of this and then I hear more and more stories of this fentanyl coming over the U.S. southern border. Remember where fentanyl comes from? China to Mexico, across our border, and then to every community in the country. And we have Americans dying of overdose of fentanyl opioids at record numbers. And then we have a media, by the way, and, and this is obviously my, my sweet spot. I've, I've covered it for years. We have a media that is so broken and was so hell-bent on getting the last president out of office by any means necessary, including making the jump from you know journalism to activism in broad daylight. They didn't even bother to try to hide the bias anymore so they're so focused on trump that they didn't look very closely at the man who replaced trump i mean here's a guy who has been caught we're going all the way back to law school plagiarizing on multiple occasions the first time he ran for president he had to drop out because of that that should be the end like you don't run again you you don't get past that point right because you've been proven that you're stealing other people's work and this is a guy who claimed to finish at the top of his class in law school, but he actually finished 76th out of 85th. He's a pathological liar who's claimed everything from, from getting arrested in South Africa, trying to seize Nelson Mandela, to intimidating a gang leader named Corn Pop, when he was like the Clint Eastwood of David Hasselhoff's of a lifeguard at a local pool. And then I have chapters devoted to basic competency, competency on basic things. We are experiencing crippling 40 year high inflation right now. And when you ask this president, what is the solution? He says, hey, why don't we pass you know, a $6 trillion spending bill, which he said with a straight face, mind you, will lower inflation and reduce the deficit, which is literally the exact opposite of how you solve a problem like this. Any sophomore taking a basic economics class knows this you put more money into the system it devalues the money it creates inflation but somehow the guy who got you know 81 million votes doesn't know this and, and, and biden keep kept saying during the uh 2020 campaign that he will take responsibility he won't pass blame off on others unlike donald trump so on the economy this guy blames covid and vladimir putin on gas prices, he doesn't exactly, you know, accept responsibility there either for canceling oil leases or canceling the extension of the Keystone Pipeline or stopping drilling in Anwar in Alaska. And he goes to the old Democratic playbook and he blames evil oil companies on the border. He, and, and this might be the most ridiculous excuse, he blames Donald Trump for inheriting a broken border. You know, the same guy who stopped construction on the wall or the remain in Mexico policy, all while begging migrants to come to this country illegally when he was a candidate. We, we, we have the tape. He says, search the border. And they listened, believe me. And then on the rise in crime, you tell me the last time this president had police officers, police unions to the White House to say, we stand by you. We will give you the resources you need. This will not stand anymore. That never happened. But he did have to defund the police lobbyists to the White House. That was okay. So the book obviously takes a look back at these 18 months, and that's all it's been. It feels like five years. And I'll look on the, as far as the media, again, we, we look back on that and we look at it now, the pom-poms out cheerleading for Biden all to take out Trump. And we look to the future as well to see how we great we get this great country back. What do you got to do? It's one thing to complain. We got a lot of people in this business who are excellent at complaining. What are the solutions? What do you do? A, B, C. That's common sense. It can be done. It's within the realm of reality in order to get us back on track. So I hope you buy it. Once again, come on, man. The truth about Joe Biden's terrible, horrible, no good, very bad presidency because we can't have short titles anymore. 
I was just happy it would come on man. And the publishers are like, well, you know, you kind of have to add a little subtitle below it. I'm like, all right, I guess that's the way things go these days. But we talk about having police unions or police officers to the White House and flanking the president and the president saying, we back the blue completely. All lives matter. Can't say that anymore. I remember a guy in Seattle, uh, no, I'm sorry, Sacramento, and he was the play-by-play guy for the Sacramento Kings of the NBA. And somebody asked him on Twitter, uh, do you support Black Lives Matter? And all he responded was, you know, I think all lives matter. He got fired. He was with the team for 20 years. Gone. Right? So uh, the president can make a real point by having those in blue at the White House and saying, okay, guys, I'm on your side. We're going to lower crime. We're going to do X, Y, Z to do this, and I have your back. That's what Donald Trump did do and would do in that situation, as would Ron DeSantis as well. And instead, we don't see that. And then we see, just yesterday, 12 police officers in San Francisco, they had bottles thrown at them and fireworks fired at them. Can somebody ask Nancy Pelosi next time? Because that's just kind of her district, right? Hey, your city is completely falling apart. And all you're concentrating on are the January 6th hearings. Why is that? Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, we see police officers being blatantly and brazenly attacked. And then you see the resignations happening at a record place and, and, and police officers retiring. Why wouldn't they? If you could get your pension at this point, you're going to be treated like this and you're going to be called the bad guy by some in the media. You're the problem. I don't know how much of that I would take either. Fortunately, there are many police officers that are able to shut that out and they still want to protect their communities, even though they're being targeted at a higher and higher rate. Oh, by the way, Boris Johnson's out. He's he's resigning. You can see that coming. This guy looks like the fifth Beatle, you know? I mean, if you're ever going to have somebody look like a prime minister of Britain, like he, the hair, the the, 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 the tummy, the whole thing, you know, he certainly looks the part. And obviously, Partygate played a big role in that. Because while all the pubs were closed in London and across, across England, you know, this guy is having, you know, a hot toddy, right? And there's, there's photos of it. But that isn't also what, what, what got him out. I mean, obviously, inflation, you think it's bad here. It's, I think it's 8.6% here in the U.S. Remember, it was 1.4% when Donald Trump left office. So we're talking six times as high. Just saying, in England, it's actually at 9%. Percent. So when the economy is going bad and then you have a big controversy, all those factors means Boris Johnson's out. He's not completely out, by the way. He still sticks around until October and then they have an election and that's that. Meanwhile, speaking of the aforementioned president and Biden, he went to Ohio yesterday, six times to Ohio. He has been to the Buckeye State six times since taking office. How many times he's been to the U.S. southern border? It's a number you get when you multiply something by zero, as in zero. But there he is in Ohio again, a, a, a state that he got smoked by Donald Trump in something like I think Donald Trump won by eight points. That used to be pretty much a toss-up state, right? As Ohio went, then elections went. Uh, so I'm not sure why he's spending so much time there, because if he does run again, regardless of who the Republican nominee is, uh, that, that state's gone. It's, it's now gone solidly blue. But it is amazing, though. He is there talking about how, again, it's Putin's fault that you're seeing the inflation and gas prices that, that are happening. And you know who wasn't there with Joe Biden? A congressman named Tim Ryan, who is running for the Senate against J.D. Vance. <laughs> he says that he had, quote, previous scheduling events, unquote, and couldn't join the president of the United States and the leader of his party to campaign with him. And that just shows you how toxic Joe Biden is right now. Uh, another uh, politician there named Nan Whaley, uh, she is running for governor there in Ohio. Uh, she had other stuff to do as well. Quote, cleaning out the salt and pepper shakers, unquote. All right, I made that up. But you get the point, though. No one's going to campaign with this guy. And why would you? When you look at the polls, and remember, these polls are usually plus eight, Democrat in terms of how they're weighted in their methodology. In other words, they are polling 8% more Democrats than Republicans, right? So take that for what 
<laughs> you will. Uh, but let's see. Mammoth polling. He is at 35% approval. Now, remember, that's national. So that's adding in New York and California and Illinois and Chicago. So it, it's weighted up a little bit, for lack of a better term. When you look at this state-by-state state polling, it is horrific. And that's what elections come down to. It's not a national, obviously, it's not a national election. It comes down to several key states. I can name them off the top of my head. New Hampshire, Georgia, Florida, Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia. Throw that in there now. And he is vastly underwater in all of those states. I don't care if it's Trump, DeSantis, Haley, you pick your nominee. I don't see how this guy wins or how he even runs. Joe Concha in for Sean Hannity. We got some great guests coming up, including Tim Brando, Fox Sports, Carol Roth, who is like one of the greatest guests like ever, and, and so much more. Your calls, of course, 800 941 7326 at 800 941 Sean. Be a part of the program. Back with more in a moment. you'll hear the inside story that no one else has. The behind-the-scenes chatter that the mainstream media doesn't even know about. This is the Sean Hannity Show. Welcome back, everybody. Joe Concha in for Sean Hannity, the Sean Hannity Show. 800-941-SEAN. That's 800-941-7326. Please do call. I've done phone calls on the show before, and you guys are so well-informed and passionate. It would be a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, passing on some sad news, if you haven't heard, you've been at work. Uh, James Kahn, Jimmy Kahn, star of The Godfather, of course, dead at 82, according to his family. He died yesterday. It is with great sadness that we inform you of the passing of Jimmy on the evening of July 6th. The family appreciates the outpouring of love and heartfelt condolences and asks that you continue to respect their privacy during this difficult time. But what a run. I mean, I, I know everybody talks about The Godfather, but if you haven't seen Misery with Kathy Bates, I'm writing a book right now. And I think somebody offered, you should go to a cabin and just get some isolation for a while. I go, what are you, crazy? So some lady could come up there and take out my knees? Not happening. But that's a great performance. So please do watch that. Back with more in a moment. We have a great show for you here in the Sean Hannity Show. Zillow makes touring homes simple, unlike certain real estate acronyms that sound like internet slang, such as DTI, MB, and FSBO. Keep it simple. Schedule a personal home tour with a local expert at Zillow.com. This is What's Right with America. You're listening to The Sean Hannity Show. Hey, welcome back to the Sean Hannity Show. Joe Concha in for Mr. Hannity. 800-941-SEAN. That's S-E-A-N, by the way. There's two ways to spell it. I don't know if you heard. Or 800-941-7326 for the numerically inclined out there. Welcome your phone calls. Please do. It's Open Line Thursday. I just came up with a new nickname. Let's go to some calls here. And let's see. I want to talk to Jim in Pennsylvania because he wants to know, can Oz beat Fetterman? Obviously, that's a big, big race for the Senate there. Who you got your money on, Jim? I I don't know. I, I'm a big Trump supporter. And I, I want a Republican in the seat. I just don't know that it's possible for us to beat Fetterman in Pennsylvania. You know, I'm concerned, yeah. you know, he, he got a lot of support from Sean and I respect Sean for that. But, uh, when you look at the things that's in his past, the way he's flip flopped and some other issues there, I, I'm not talking to, I'm in a farming community in northwestern Pennsylvania, yeah. and I'm talking to people, and a lot of the people that I'm talking to says we ain't got anybody to vote for for Senate. 
That's interesting, huh? I mean, I'm reading an article right now. It's in Politico, and it quotes Republicans. So it's not one of those, you know, an anonymous source close to the Oz campaign. Like I, I, I read uh, from actual Republicans here in quotes uh, talking about how Oz has basically gone. And I don't know if you've seen this, Jim. He's gone dark since he won that primary, and that was several weeks ago. And you don't really see him all that much. He's not campaigning all that hard. So I just wonder at this point if Dr. Oz, is he have some sort of strategy here? Well, it's summer and it's, you know, around July 4th. So there's no point in me doing this, but I, I wonder, are you seeing much of Dr. Oz in your state right now? I have not heard anything since the primary. Uh, I have talked to two people that went and met him personally and both of the people that I spoke with uh, said they were not impressed. That's interesting. I know, but I wonder. Name. Yeah, go ahead. He has name recognition and so forth, and and he's had the money behind him. But he just to people in Pennsylvania, he don't feel like a Pennsylvanian. That's interesting. And and the one thing I would say that I give him definitely a a, a good chance. It, not. I, let me put it this way. It, Joe Biden is polling so badly in, in your state like he is everywhere else, right? But he's something like 17, 18 points out underwater that he could just drag any Democrat down with him. But I want to talk to an expert in the state of Pennsylvania, and she happens to be right here in studio. Linda, what are How you seeing lucky. and hearing? You know, it's funny. Um, I, I really do hear what, what he's saying. You know, I was... Born and raised in Philadelphia, moved to New York many years ago, and I'm back now. And I can honestly say that there were a lot of people, you know, in my own church that were against Oz and just thought he was a flip-flopper and, you know, sort of uh, um, coming in like the Trojan horse. He was going to, you know, try to get the primary vote. And then we just didn't know what was going to happen. But I think at the end of the day, when you when you really started to call him on the issues, and we did. You know, I mean, I went to Oz's campaign directly and I was like, so what about this? So what about this? So what about this? And what has happened is there's a lot of things that are misreported or they are nuanced and they take things out. And there's just so much misinformation out there. Yeah. And I think that's the larger the problem that we have with us, specifically in Pennsylvania. And we had a lot of great candidates. You know, Jeff Bartos was somebody who a lot of people love, me included, um, you know, and it was difficult to look at everybody because it became so vitriolic and it became a battle about personal things as opposed to the issues. And here in Pennsylvania, you know, we care about very simple things, you know, our family, our mortgage rates, our gas prices, you know, we have a lot of people that could be doing a lot and they can't because of, you know, stupid liberal policies. And I do think that Oz at the end of the day is going to correct some of those things and help us out. You know, I do because he's a businessman. He ran a successful business. And I think that he'll do that for Pennsylvania. And God help us, we know Fetterman can't do it. I mean, forget about it. Well, that's the it. thing. You spoke about misinformation before, and I keep reading from many in media calling John Fetterman somehow a more moderate, pragmatic Democrat. All right, let's line it up here, Linda, right? John Fetterman endorsed Bernie Sanders for president. He advocates the Green New Deal and supports government-run health care. At last check, that ain't a moderate Democrat. No, and he's not a moderate Democrat. And here's the problem, right? So I think right now, one of the things that I'm talking to a lot of people about, and I feel very strongly about, is we can all get unified on one issue, right? And one issue that we can all get unified on is the economy and gas prices. These are, yeah. these are things that everybody's feeling. No matter who you like in office, no matter whether you call yourself a Democrat, a Republican, a socialist, a conservative, it doesn't matter. We're all paying the same price at the pump, every single one of us. And I think that's something that we can get around. If we look back in history, we've never paid this much for gas. We have never had such a terrible economy. This is something that we have never seen since Carter days. You know, I mean, Obama was bad, no doubt, but that was another Biden moment. And I think what we're seeing now is the uh-oh moment. Like, okay, we have a baby formula shortage. We have mortgage rates out of control. People can't fill their gas tanks. We can't get to work. We are definitely in the midst of a recession. And we've got, you know... Biden handing out medals for the highest civilian honor. I'm I'm sorry. Do you have not? Do you have nothing better to do? You got Kamala out there. She hasn't been to the border yet. Mayorkas. What is he doing at the border? You got Texas calling 
for them to, you know, call it an invasion. They're, they're ready to turn against the Biden administration. The Biden administration is suing Arizona because they, they want illegals to be able to vote. What? Proof of citizenship is now a problem. Like, I just, the whole world is upside down. So we're going to have to do our best to align ourselves with the candidates that we have that are saying that they're going to follow true principles. And 100 percent, if it's Oz or Fetterman, I'm Oz every day of the week. No question. And Oz is an excellent communicator. And if, yes, if he exactly. could just channel exactly what you just did, and I've seen it, then look, it's July. What is it? Seventh today. The campaign's not really truly going to start until after Labor Day, right? And then you have that, that exactly. two-month sprint, including debates. And when it comes down to those questions on what are you going to do to lower infra- inflation, John Fetterman? Do you, th- do you agree with Joe Biden that we should spend trillions more in order to lower inflation? The minute you attach Fetterman to Biden and all of his policies around energy, particularly in Pennsylvania, because we know how important that is there, then I think he's finished. Then I think Oz, as long as he runs a company campaign focused on the issues, I think just like everywhere else, a red tsunami is coming, Linda. Exactly. And if you look at places like West Virginia, upstate New York, Pennsylvania, these are oil rich states these are places that have natural gas and oil where we could get a lot of people back to work and quickly and the one conversation that i have all the time on the air with sean and other hosts and it rings true every time is people who say well we have to go green and we have to go green now do you understand that in the paris climate accord that the only people that have to hold true to it is the united states and china and india which are the two biggest most egregious aggressors when it comes to anything with regard to pollution do not have to do anything for another 10 years So can somebody please explain to me why drilling here at home, putting Americans back to work, putting money back into Americans' pockets is not a good idea, but buying it from people in Iran, Saudi Arabia, OPEC, who won't even take a a meeting with bumbling Biden. It's an embarrassment. What are we talking about? Everybody can agree on that. Come on. I mean, like your book, right? Come on, man. Come on, man. It's like if we do all these things at home in terms of climate change and spend trillions of dollars and wreck our economy in the process, if China, Russia, and India continue to pollute at the rate that they do, well, that's not going to change much now, is it? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. That's why if we're talking about the global war on climate, then why are the, you know, the people of the United States the only ones bearing the brunt? Can someone please explain that to me? Because I don't understand it. Maybe Tony from Pennsylvania, I'm going to stick with the Pennsylvania theme here, can explain that to us, Linda. Tony, you there? How you doing? Outstanding. Say hi to Linda. Hi. Hi, Linda. Linda, preach it. Linda, preach it. Thank you, Tony. The crowd loves her. What do you want to talk about, Tony? I have a feeling immigration, but I'm just guessing. I got this, you know, whole eight ball thing going on. You know, I guess, you know, Linda brought up a lot of points, but I think my frustration is, if illegal immigration is a federal crime and but and Biden administration is allowing them to come in and not only allowing them but aiding and abetting by taking them to other states and buses, not to mention the drugs and the cra- the trafficking that is happening and just and the fifty that just died in the truck and national security, why is not anyone bringing charges or impeachment? towards the administration when they're literally breaking the law. Well, I, I could answer that first, and I'll, I'll let Linda uh, weigh in, but I have a feeling we have the same perspective on this. It's because Republicans don't control Congress right now, but when they do, uh, believe you me, uh, a Mayorkas, for example, uh, he may have his head on the chopping block, rhetorically we mean, of course, uh, because they can't control anything, so you can't impeach without having a control of Congress or Senate or something. Uh, so I think that's what makes these midterms so important, because then that gives you the power to hold the kind hearings that democrats are now at january 6th which is a show trial but you're going to get investigations and hearings into hunter biden and what's going on at the border and as far as impeachments are concerned it is a breach of national security what's happening here not just terrorists coming over but what i mentioned before which is fentanyl and it's the most underrated story in our media because it killed over a hundred thousand americans last year and was the leading cause of death for those between 18 and 49 and i don't hear a Keep out of his administration talking about that. It's instead, yeah, let's like, talk about Liz like. Cheney and her pursuit of truth. Enough already. Linda, where are you at on this? No, I love it. I mean, Tony, you make a good point, right? I mean, we're, we're dealing with this everywhere. We're getting children that are being sex trafficked because they're coming across the border with these um, coyotes and these drug cartels. And I mean, life is very cheap on the border and they don't care. And I don't know about you, but, you know, Tom Holman was on and 
He made a really good point, you know, about his time when he was on the border and working for Trump. And he's like, you know, when we saw a five year old come in dead at the border, our heart broke. You know, we heard a lot seeing a child die at the hands of a cartel that could care less whether they lived or died. You know, life is important here. And I think that's why we're seeing issues like people saying we are farmers in Texas and we are finding bodies all over our farms because the trek from Mexico and they're not just coming from Mexico. They're coming from Honduras and Guatemala and they're looking for a better way and a better hope. And they're saying, Joe Biden, please let us in. But what we're not realizing is how are they getting here? Right. There's some kind of facilitation happening. They've got on they've got T-shirts. They're getting cell phones. There's buses waiting for them. And then those who aren't lucky enough to find their way there are, you know, they're on the death train and these young girls are being raped. I mean, the stories go on and on and on. But Americans turn a blind eye because, you know, Mayorkas says we have it under control. Kamala says, hey, no problem. Everything's fine. And Biden doesn't know what day it is. So at some point, we have to talk to the guys on the ground that are in the CBP, that are working on the border, that are talking to the people that are living in Texas and these other migrant towns surrounding the border and say, what is happening? And I got to say, I'm behind them. You know, I mean, they have every right to stand up and say, we want to protect our state. We want to protect our children. And we don't want to encourage people to come across the border where they could die on the way. I mean, at what point did we encourage this? Yeah, and you you mentioned all the ways that we're facilitating this from a transportation perspective, right? Buses waiting. What about the planes waiting? Planes taking migrants into New York and not into LaGuardia, which has a high profile, but Westchester, you know, north of the the city, middle of the night. And the officials being paid off and being told to be quiet. I'm thinking to myself, what in God's great name is going on? We got the federal government telling FAA officials that they're not allowed to talk about who is coming in and who's paying for all this. Because I know it ain't Joe Biden. It's you us. You know what? The, the backstop's supposed to be the people that are supposed to speak truth to power is the media. And oh, the minute power, that you those plane what? stories started to come out, right, that, wait a minute, middle of the night, migrants being flown in secretly. Boy, that could be a big story, huh? 60 Minutes? Huh, CNN? Oh, yeah, right. And instead, exactly. it's nothing to see here. The bias of omissions, the most insidious omission that we have, the stories that we don't hear about and they don't report, Linda. Exactly right. It's so depressing, Indeed. Joe. It is. It is depressing. I want to end on a better note. Have you ever guest hosted for the show? Because I have a feeling you could do it very, very oh, well. Oh, no, not me. I'm, I'm, I'm the professional sidekick. It's what I do best. I'm, I'm here to help everybody else do great. And you're, you're killing think, it as usual. No, no. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But I have a feeling that sidekick, you're starting quarterback at this point. I nah, want to hear nah, this. Nah. I'm behind right. the scenes. I work best there. But thank you, sir. Okay, sure. No problem. I like having a co-host here, actually. <laughs> this is nice. We're like Laverne and Shirley. I'll be I got Laverne. promoted. There you go. Now, we'll be like Joni and Chachi. That's probably a better comparison. (laughs) But Joni doesn't love Chachi because, you know. No, she doesn't. She throws things at him. Honey, if you're listening out there, this is all just, you know, for fun. It's good. (laughs) Anyway, Joe Concha filling in for Sean Hannity, the Sean Hannity Show. 800-941-7326. 800-941-SEAN. That is the number to call. More of your calls coming up. If you miss one day, you'll be out of the loop. Would someone please tell me what is going on here? Ooh, it's happy handy music. I feel like going surfing or something right now. If only I could. Joe Concha in for Sean Hannity, 800-941-7326. 800-941-SEAN. If you wish to opine... Quick story to share here for you. Four Norman Rockwell works featured in the White House have been taken down and replaced with photos of President Joe Biden. This is according to Politico. Interesting. I wonder what the media reaction would be if not the 46th president did this, but the 45th president did this in... I got to say it in the uh, Sebastian Gorka voice, Donald J. Trump. He made the J like a seven second letter Gorka, you know, who will be an evil Bond villain one day. I can guarantee you this. But yeah, I mean, imagine if Trump did this.